My name is Patrick Foley or Patrick 4D as people know me on social media. I'm a digital chef or 3D artist based out of Atlanta, Georgia. I think with the current niche that I'm in, I have a bunch of sources of inspiration, everything from the meals I have every day or going to a grocery store even. I've told people it's like I'm walking into an art gallery with different brands, you see the packaging, and I always take inspiration in pieces where I can. So if I feel like I can do something better, or if I could learn from something, I think just a quick trip to the local grocery store is a, is a great place for inspiration. I think when sculpting food, you can get really creative because it's so organic. So you can have a lot more flexibility and freedom to make things that uh, otherwise need to be perfect. For instance, if you're modeling a car or something like that, uh, you don't have the same freedoms that you do when you're making something like a bowl of rice, where you can take a few grains of rice and throw them over here, randomize them. There's a lot of flexibility and freedom in that. And I think uh, I gravitate towards that. At first, I think I was making characters. And then when I made a lot of these crazy characters, I started bringing cartoon foods to life. For instance, the Krabby Patty from SpongeBob, or Purple Flirt from Jimmy Neutron. And after I started making these, I started to realize not only am I pretty fast with it, but not a lot of people were kind of dive it, diving into this food realm. And so when I did that, I was like, oh, well, we've made cartoon foods come to life and this looks really tasty. What happens if we make real foods come to life? I think with all the noise social media comes with these days, I do have a soft spot for it because it is what has given me such a platform and a career. And it's connected me to not only so many other artists, so many brands that I've continued to work with today. I think one of my most fun collabs has been the recent one with Duncan, in which I came up with a special summer treat cold brew idea, and they released it as a real product. Uh, and so I got to go into one of their stores in Atlanta and try it for myself. In high school, I was placed in front of a bunch of computers in this class called Digital Imaging and Digital Video Art. And those were the classes where I was first experiencing creating something in a digital sense. And from that, I realized I wanted to be a photographer. And through that, a videographer or a director of photography went to school for film and television. And then through that, found other mediums such as Cinema 4D and the Maxon products. First experience with ZBrush was very daunting and I was not mentally prepared for the UI at the beginning. And I actually had to take a six month break because I think I was starting with projects that were too intense. And so I had to remind myself to start very small. And I remember I was making cartoon characters at the time. So instead of making something super detailed, I was like, okay, let's just start small. Let's start with like a Powerpuff Girl where each body part uh, was very simplistic. And so I started with baby primitives and just worked my way up. I had an aha moment in ZBrush when I realized you could use this feature called Nano Mesh. For instance, making a bowl of rice Instead of having to hand create each of the rice grains, you could use the NanoMesh feature. And not only that, you could randomize each of the width, size, rotation, everything that you needed, and then just bake it down and uh, decimate. So it was a very life-changing set of tools that I still use on a daily basis for a lot of foods that require repetitions of geometry. So far, my experience with ZBrush for iPad has been phenomenal. I think as someone who has such a unique setup at home, it's really hard for me to work mobily. And the ZBrush for iPad allows me to start sketches and start things while I'm on the go, and then later on work on them in the stationary comfort of my setup. And I think that's like one of the most powerful parts of this. I think the future of sculpting is very bright because I think before when you have a huge barrier of entry, to someone who isn't an artist or maybe is, but doesn't have the funds uh, to be buying tablets left and right. I think a lot of people have products like iPad and it's gonna allow a lot more people access to be making things that they thought was only possible with a crazy setup.